call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is 6.01. Um, item 1A, invocation and, pre and pledges. Mr. Uh, Inman. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you for this uh, time we're brought together to do the work of CISD. Father, I do thank you for Grand Oaks, all those that are represented here tonight, the parents, the students, the teachers, the administration, and the other fine gentlemen that are working on the board, trying to do with wisdom with what you would have us do. Father, I ask a blessing on the kids as they're doing their uh, final studies and getting ready for summer, and thank you for having us uh, in this position. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Tonight we'll be doing the pledges, and we are, have the privilege of having the Boy Scout troop be our pledge leaders, and we have the color guard of William Payett, Cody Wright, Justin Rana, and Dylan McDonald. Do you guys want to step forward? And leading us in these pledges tonight is uh, York Junior High National Honor Society students, Catherine Hart, Veronica Patel, Madison Brueger, and Caitlin McQuaid. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God, one and Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmon. Outstanding job, young man. Um, all right. <clears throat> Item 2A, special recognition, Grand Oaks High School Feeder Zone. Dr. Right. No. Well, as we have reached the conclusion of our school year, we've now had an opportunity to celebrate each of our high school feeders, and tonight is our chance to celebrate the Grand Oaks Feeder. And uh, as Mr. Inman mentioned, it's great to see so many folks that made the rather long trip from Grand Oaks <laughs> up here to Conroe tonight. Right. Thank you for getting here, and glad you arrived safely. Uh, we will start our celebration out with our feeder video. Welcome to Grand Oaks Feeder. This is a community that is excited for the future and the opportunity to grow together. Our goal here in the Grand Oaks Feeder is to challenge and guide our students in order to create leaders for the future. We look forward to leading Conroe ISD's newest feeder into the future through new technologies, cutting edge CTE courses, competitive programs, and rigorous academic classes. Here's just a sample of the positive events happening each day within Grand Oaks schools in order to create leaders of the future.
Thank you for taking this time to see how the Grand Oaks Feeder is growing together and molding the leaders of tomorrow. This is Grizzly Nation. I'll turn it over to our head grizzly, Dr. Chris Overs. <laughs> it's okay. The kids call me Papa Grizzly. What they call me, so we'll make the adjustment for the future. Right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Duly noted. All right. Dr. Knoll, President Williams, members of the Board of Trustees, it's an honor to stand before you this evening and spend some time sharing with you some of the great programs and the amazing individuals from Grand Oaks Feeder Zone. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize our student greeters this evening. Students, when your name is called, please come forward and join me at the podium. From Burnham Woods Elementary School, Emily Tomlin. Bradley Elementary School, Miles Taylor. Broadway Elementary School, Travis Bone. Ford Elementary School, Michael Gorman. Snyder Elementary School, Laney Lee. Clark Intermediate School, Addison Prim. Cox Intermediate School, Madison Jones. Please join me in thanking our student greeters and their parents for joining us. I'd also like to recognize our harpists that provided the soothing entrance to our meeting this evening. We decided to take a break on you and not bring the entire drum line. <laughs> Students, when your name is called, please come forward and join me next to the podium here. From Cox Intermediate, Elizabeth Howard. From York Junior High School, Catherine Hart and Zoe Wynn. In attendance this evening, representing our feeder schools are our principals. Principals, please join me also up the front here. From Burnham Woods Elementary, Natalie Buckley. Bradley Elementary School, Christine Butler. Broadway Elementary, Nikki Conley. Ford Elementary School, Paula Gorman. Crystal Poncho is not here this evening. She's at Professional Development. Here representing Snyder Elementary is her assistant principal, Linda Graham. Clark Intermediate. Lindsay Ardwan, Cox Intermediate, Deborah Spoon, York Junior High, Brian Lee. They've truly have been an amazing group to work with this year. They keep me in line and uh, keep me busy, which is good. Dr. Null, President Williams, and the members of the Board of Trustees, it's been a wonderful first year for our new feeder. As you've seen in the video, our theme this year for our students has been one of growing together, creating leaders for the future. This year, we've worked on building genuine relationships with all of our students for the improvement of academics by providing opportunities for student growth, student voice, and student participation and collaboration in our school communities. One of our programs this year that has demonstrated such involves the students at Grand Oaks High School. These students created what we has been become to known as the Grizzly Bean Coffee Shop. For the record, they are the first students at Grand Oaks High School to be on live TV. <laughs> Present tonight to introduce these student celebrities and their staff is one of their teachers, Shelby Weiner. Shelby.
I appreciate it. Thank you, dear. Appreciate you. That's, that's Mr. Kidd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give it to him. Thank you for all you do. Here, I'll be out here. Appreciate it very much. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is like meeting celebrities. I've seen you all on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everything. How about another big round of applause? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping us. Dr. Knoll, President Williams, and members of the board. Bailey Cowart is a third grade student at Burnham Woods Elementary, and we are so proud of her eagerness to help those in and around our community. Bailey believes that every child should have their basic needs fulfilled so that they can be their best at school and be successful academically. She mainly focuses her efforts on students in CISD. Just last week, her organization made a huge donation to Grangerland Intermediate. I'll now turn it over to Bailey to tell you more about that donation as well as other wonderful things that she's doing through her organization, Be Blessed. Hi, my name is Bailey Cowart. I am a third grader at Burnham Woods Elementary and I am eight years old. I am here to tell you about my charity, Be Blessed. When I was in kindergarten, I made my first donation to the nurse's office at Burnham Woods with money I had raised from a sweet tea stand. After this, I started having more sweet tea stands and selling toys that I didn't play with anymore. I also asked family and friends to bring donations of supplies to my birthday party instead of cards. A friend of ours was a teacher at Grangerland and told us about how lots of his students didn't have the school supplies they needed. In second grade, I got enough to donate 20 backpacks and several boxes of supplies to Grangerland. Last year, I set my goal to double that. With a lot of help, I was able to donate 40 full sets of supplies to Grangerland before school started. A friend of ours even called the newspaper, and they wrote a whole story about it. I told the newspaper that this year I wanted to donate 80 backpacks. This is when my family decided we needed to file to become a nonprofit. In, 20 <laughs> <laughs> In 2019, this happened, and we are now a tax-exempt nonprofit charity. We have already made a donation to Ford Elementary this year of over 80 composition notebooks and 50 packs of crayons. Just last week, we made a huge donation of 387 hygiene kits, 20 pair of new shoes, dozens of socks, 65 backpacks, and two full carloads of supplies Granger to Grangerland. We still have over 100 backpacks at home to donate for back-to-school time, too. This summer, I'm having several fundraisers for my charity to hopefully help more schools. The biggest one will be at Pottery Barn Teen at the Woodlands Mall on July 20th. I would love to have your support as we work to help as many students as possible. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. Thank you for thinking about that. And where at the Woodlands Mall? 
Outstanding. Hey. Speaking of, tell them again their date and time so they get it. Right? Yeah. At July 20th, um, at Pottery Barn Teen on July 20th with, at the Woodlands Mall. Good evening, Dr. Knoll and members of the board. It is an honor and a privilege to be here tonight to um, <coughs> honor somebody so special and so important to the Grand Oaks feeder zone. When I think of Kyle Sherburn, it brings, it brings to mind the phrase, giving back. That is what Kyle Sherburn does. He gives so much to our community. He has invested his time, his resources, and life for the past nine years to our community. I met him when his oldest child enrolled at Broadway Elementary School. We were looking for someone who would sponsor our character program's Hall of Fame. Mr. Sherburn volunteered to sponsor our character program by donating t-shirts to the children that earned their way into the Broadway Hall of Fame by demonstrating good character traits throughout our school building. He has now sponsored the Hall of Fame for the past nine years. He has contributed to our Grand Oaks Feeder Schools by providing attendance incentives, for not, incentives not just for our students, but for our staff members as well. He has contributed so many things to our community. Uh, for Cox, he has donated money to assist in buying books for teachers' libraries. And as we know as educators, <coughs> that is very important. Um, he has also donated um, many, many things to all of our community members and all of our schools throughout any kind of hazards or hard times that we have ever had in our Grand Oaks feeder. We're so appreciative of Kyle, Kyle Sherburn and the many contributions that he has made to our community. Thank you, Mr. Sherburn, for your kindness and your compassion over the years in helping us shine as a district. Mr. Sherburn, would you please come back? So you get that. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Hey Kyle, you want to pay that forward? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dr. Knoll, President Williams, and members of the board, it is with great honor that I introduce to you an incredibly giving family and nearby community business who has gone above and beyond to support many schools here in the Grand Oaks area. Please join me in recognizing the lovely and generous Hearts of Gold, Sean and Kim Burns, owners of Planet Ford in Spring, Texas. Over the past few years, the Burns family has sponsored the Walk of Fame for Broadway Elementary, purchased keychains and spirit sticks for the children at Snyder, and have become platinum sponsors for the infamous Yorkapalooza event that's held every year at York Junior High. This year, they have generously supported both of the brand new campuses that have opened. They've been a huge donor to the Grand Oaks High School Athletic Department and donated $5,000 alone for the children at Clark Intermediate to be able to have recess and play equipment starting on day one. It is my pleasure to recognize these incredible hearts of gold, Sean and Kim Burns.
have adequate play equipment just to <laughs> go outside and recreate with. And, and to do that for Clark was just simply amazing. So thank you and on behalf of the district. I just want to say, wow, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> really so, would you mind? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Appreciate, appreciate everything, man. Outstanding. There you go. <laughs> no, we don't let you go. <laughs> 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 appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. God bless you. Three years ago. So we have a time for you. Y'all enjoy. Even better. Good job, Ray. Dr. Null, President Williams, members of the board, thank you for providing this time this evening for the Grand Oaks Feeder to share some of our proud moments and recognize and contributing students, staff, and community members from this past school year. We look forward to what the future holds for our growing Grand Oaks Grizzly Nation. Finally, I know you don't hear it nearly enough for all your hard work and countless hours of dedication to our district. On behalf of the Grand Oaks Feeder, thank you for your support of our students, staff, and our community. Thank you again. Thank you. Flagship. Outstanding presentation once again, um, Dr. Povich and all staff and all the kids, outstanding. We really appreciated that. We are extremely blessed, uh, school board, to have the Oak Ridge, I'm sorry, the Grand Oaks, uh, <laughs> as one of our feeders. The colors, the colors got me. Um, really appreciate it, and I uh, appreciate all the parents for coming out and showing their support. Outstanding as well. It's always good to see you guys, um, you know, come out, support the kids, and support the district at large. Outstanding job. Really appreciate everything. Uh, with that being said, let's continue on with our special recognition, Conroe ISD and the Fine Arts Department. Yes, sir. M -M Thank you very Dr. much. Um, this has become somewhat of a tradition for us, uh, but it's a proud tradition, uh, and, and I'll, I won't steal Dr. Horton's thunder, but uh, I do want to recognize that tonight is a celebration of uh, wonderfully gifted teachers and educators and the children that they instruct, and I think we saw that tonight when you heard the harpist play, and then they were introduced, and they were junior high students and an intermediate student um, that were uh, performing tonight, and um, all of what we'll celebrate tonight starts with leadership. And uh, I think we spoke about this last year, but for the, for the last year, Dr. Bob Horton has served as the president of TMEA, um, which is the Texas Mu Music Educators Association. And um, I went to the convention this year where we had many student groups performing and over 30,000 people attend that convention that Dr. Horton oversaw as the president. So. Um, it is no surprise that we have such great fine arts programs in Conroe ISD because we have great fine arts leadership in Conroe ISD. And so at this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Horton. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, let me begin by thanking you, our CISD Board of Trustees, for your support of fine arts that allows opportunities like this to be possible. I am excited to share with you that Conroe ISD has received a 2019 designation as a best community for music education. The Best Communities for Music Education Award is a nationwide recognition program, but as we approach graduation, I do want to share with you just a little piece of data about our graduating seniors this year. Earlier this spring, I was asked to uh, sort of ask them what their plans were and what they were going to do to continue on in fine arts. And we had 120 of our students respond of their own accord to tell us that from their colleges and universities, 46 different institutions have awarded our graduating seniors. This is not private money. This is not uh, booster club money. This is from colleges and universities. Over $257,000 of scholarship money as well as over $1.45 million of academic money. So our seniors, uh, thanks to their wonderful teachers and the preparation they've had in CISD, are headed off to a great future in college. 
So all that is to say that um, we're very excited about this program tonight that is selected by the National Association of Music Merchants Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization that is committed to advancing music education through active participation. It's, it was established in 1999 and it's a nationwide search for communities who provide access to music education as an essential part of a complete education and who exemplify commitment and support for music education. So this 20th annual survey measured a variety of factors including budgetary commitment to music, opportunities for students to learn, the presence of highly qualified certified music teachers, adherence to state and national standards and the different types of musical experiences offered, and performance and competition opportunities for students. A community through this survey had to show that they are committed to access and high standards for music education in all areas to be named a best community. So to earn this designation, we submitted a short little 38-page survey with information about our school district, our community, and our instructional practices. So of the over 15,000 potential applicants and 2,000 school districts that applied, Conroe ISD was one of the 623 in the nation across 41 different states to be recognized. I guess it's probably also no surprise that uh, over 10% of those that were recognized are from Texas. Mm -hmm. So uh, music education is alive and well in the state of Texas, and especially in Conroe ISD. So in conclusion, two thoughts from the NAM Foundation about this national award perfectly describe Conroe ISD. The best communities in music education designation is awarded to districts that demonstrate outstanding achievement in efforts to provide music access and education to all students. And districts that have been recognized by the NAM Foundation are often held up as models for other educators looking to boost their own music education programs. 2019 is the ninth consecutive year that CISD has been named a best community for music education. And that is, uh, as Dr. Null has already alluded to, largely due to the efforts of our teachers. We have several of them who could join us tonight. So at this time, I would ask those teachers who are in attendance to stand and be recognized and let us thank you for the gifts that you give to our students. Absolutely. Thank you for giving this rec recognition to the exemplary work by our music teachers at CISD. Thank you. Absolutely. And Dr. Horton, on behalf of the board, we want to say thank you for your leadership across all of our fine arts, and particularly tonight as we celebrate um, our music educators. I am very proud to say that I myself am a product of CISD music education. I'll be um, coming up through Wilkerson and Knox and playing in the band at Nicola and my, my band directors Ed Schutz and Tommy Tuggle were two of the most influential people in my life. Um, what was <laughs> most important was not just the musical skills that they taught me, but the leadership skills that they taught me. They gave me a place to belong and for so many of our music students that is, is equally as important as the skills they're learning. Uh, several years ago when several districts uh, were facing budget cuts and were laying off fine arts staff uh, this board made a commitment not to do so because we believe very strongly uh, in fine arts education, um, not just for the beauty that it brings to us, uh, but also for the academic results that it brings. And I, I myself have a few stats. You shared some, and I have a few here. Um, in 2012, the College Board, which administers the SAT, reported that students who participated in music scored an average of 31 points above average in reading, 23 points above average in math, and 31 points above average in writing. Another study from 2012 uh, demonstrated a strong relationship between individuals who participated in school arts experiences and higher academic success as demonstrated by grade point averages, scores on state exams, and math and verbal portions of the SAT. Uh, 2017 Journal of Research and Music Education found that students in high quality school music programs score higher on standardized tests compared to students in schools with deficient music education programs, regardless of the socioeconomic level of the school or the school district. And the journal Nature reported that first graders who participated in special music classes as part of an art study every day saw their reading skills and math proficiency increase dramatically. We thank you for the work that you and all of these great music educators do. 
to prepare our students for the world, to help them increase in the, in the classroom, and to provide them with that leadership to go on and become productive citizens. So for you and for all of our teachers, we have this wonderful presentation for you to hang with pride here so everybody can know that this truly is a best community for music education. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 so much. Thank you. 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 It's, it has, it, I can't think of a better time to say this than now, so I've got to share one quick story, if you don't mind. Um, I've got a seventh grader who loves athletics, and it was time to sign up for his, elect, his, his elections this past, uh, you know, for going into seventh grade. And me and his mother found a way to twist his arm to get into the choir, and he, he really did go kicking and screaming. And me not knowing much about choir, I love to sing, but no one loves to hear me sing, mm -hmm. but I, I do enjoy it. <clears throat> But I'll have to say that um, this young man, after going through this past year, he comes home and he will get on the piano himself and sing songs and just absolutely loves it. So it's not just children and youth that are working hard at, at, at singing because they love it. You guys are turning kids on to the fine arts on your own. And, and uh, Miss Orton, I know I'm embarrassing you here, but I can't help it. I know you're my son's teacher. And I just want to say thank you for exposing him to it and, and bringing that out in him. That uh, he has gone from, I don't want to do it, to next year he'd like to sign up for a solo uh, in, the, in the singing deal. So thank you for what y'all do. I appreciate it. And don't tell him, please, don't, don't, let, don't tell him that I told y'all that. He'll kill me. It's on video now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Eric, don't write about this one. This one has to stay between I'm, us. I'm just praying genetics don't get the best of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that too. That's okay. All right, let's keep it uh, going. On that note, um, special recognition, Ambassador Awards, Child, Nutri Child Nutrition, Dr. No. Yeah, so quite possibly my favorite part of this um, the job is our Ambassador Awards, the opportunities that we have to go out to campuses and recognize our employees for the great work that they do is um, something that we all appreciate, I know, as a group. And tonight we have an opportunity um, to bring honorees here and celebrate them in front of this, this wonderful crowd. And so um, we're going to celebrate child nutrition and transportation tonight, two um, vital groups that we, that we have to have um, that serve our children. And to introduce them, we're going to start with Mr. Caker, our Assistant Superintendent of Operations, to talk about these departments. Thank you, Dr. Knoll. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Nall. Thank you for recognizing our auxiliary departments through the Ambassador Award program this evening. Tonight, we're acknowledging the outstanding service provided by our child nutrition and transportation departments and their respective honorees. Because we have a number of auxiliary support employees in the room with us tonight, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask them to stand and be recognized by all of us here this evening. Would you please stand if you're an auxiliary employee? Some of you I know are already standing. But... 
Our child nutrition department is a model program that ensures nutritious meals for all of our students and staff on a daily basis. That is not possible without the outstanding leadership of our director, Mrs. Robin Hughes. I'd like to ask Mrs. Hughes to come forward at this time to uh, announce our ambassador award winners for the child nutrition department. Good evening, Pre President Williams, members of the board and Dr. Knoll. Thank you for recognizing our child nutrition ambassadors tonight. Our first ambassador is Maria Rea. <laughs> Maria has been with the district for 10 years. She is the manager at Rice Elementary and she's a true professional. No matter what the circumstances are, she always remains calm and handles any situation with ease. She meets every deadline, has great attendance, and is very successful at training new employees. She goes the extra mile to ensure the food served is high quality and she truly cares about the students. She will take on any assignment given to her without question. We're very lucky to have Maria. Our next ambassador is LaShondra Ford. LaShondra is an associate at the Woodlands High School. She's been with us for one year. She serves as a fantastic role model for others by her actions. She is upbeat and always has a smile on her face. She's always willing to help <laughs> and anyone else that needs her. She's well liked by her coworkers and students. LaShondra goes above and beyond by thinking ahead and asking questions so she can get the job done. She likes to learn new things and takes ownership of the kitchen when the manager is out. We are very fortunate to have her in our district. <laughs> Next, we have Anna Escarbano. <laughs> Anna is an associate at Oak Ridge Elementary and has been with Child Nutrition for three years. She does a great job of taking charge in the kitchen when needed. She has demonstrated her leadership skills on several occasions and takes on responsibilities without even being asked. Anna is a quick thinker and can manage any situation. She has a great rapport with the students and takes pride in it, serving quality meals. She cares about the students' well-being and encourages the students to eat nutritious meals. We're very proud to have her in child nutrition. Our final ambassador is Sergio Velez Mendoza. Unfortunately, he's unable to be here this evening, but I would like to share some things about him. He's the cafeteria manager at Mitchell Intermediate and has been with us for four years. He leads by example and generates happiness in the workplace. He's professional and always has a positive attitude. He's committed to helping his employees develop their skills so they too can be successful. He has a lot of experience to share, but he still listens and invites new ideas. Sergio <laughs> provides all students with the best quality food and meal service possible. He's an asset to our department. I just want to quickly say thank you again on behalf of the board and the entire district. Every child, uh, a hungry child can't learn. We know that. And so we thank you for all you do each and every day. You're a very, very, very important part of this district and we thank you. Okay? Standing down. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for everything. Great job. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate you. Gracias. 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 Gracias.
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Nall, as you know, we run the largest and most efficient transportation department in the state of Texas, one of the largest. We co cover more square miles, serving more students and families as part of our transportation service, and none of this would be possible if it were not for the outstanding leadership in that department, uh, led by Mr. Sam Davila, our director. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Davila forward to recognize our ambassadors from the Transportation Department. I'll see if I can reach the mic here. Okay. <laughs> President Williams, Dr. Null, members of the board, it is my distinct honor to recognize this year's ambassadors for Transportation Department. Um, you know, when you, we see these things, we see these people Sometimes it's because of a single thing that they've done, or it's because of years of service that they've given to our district and to our students. The first person I'd like to announce is uh, Ms. Edna Dickey. And she's one of those that's been with us many years. <laughs> Ms. Edna is one of our routing specialists, and she's our senior routing specialist. Uh, she's trained folks that have left our department, and now she's training replacements for those that have come into the department. Uh, she's always been an outstanding employee. She's dedicated. Whenever we have issues, she'll be there 14 hours a day if we need her. Wow. And she keeps up. I don't know how she does it, but she keeps up with the young ones, and she can put them to shame, and <laughs> she's a role model for them to follow. So, Edna, thank you for everything you do. Our next ambassador is a Richard Smith. He goes by Rich. He is a East County transportation driver for us. Richard, Rich. <laughs> Rich has been with us for 10 years now, and uh, he embodies that personality that he cares for the students. Uh, he was uh, pulling into Caney Creek High School, and he noticed that a couple of his students were in distress. He immediately, he stayed calm, he took action, he called for some administrators and the nurse, and they came, they gave the students aid, and they actually called 911 so that we could get those students help. So we appreciate his caring of the students that much, and to make sure, and to stay calm and keep the situation under control. Thank you, Rich. Next is one of our Conroe Transportation uh, Department drivers, Trina Levita Johnson. Trina. <laughs> Trina has been with us since 2015, so she's kind of new, but she embodies what we want with the transportation folks. She's taken over. We had a, a, a departure of one of our supervisors who used to do a lot of the morale building in the department in, in that center. Well, Trina graciously volunteered uh, to fill those shoes. And so she does so much for her fellow coworkers and for the rest of the folks in the department. Um, she plans parties, she does decorations, we rec recognize the holidays, and it keeps the morale up. Uh, when you come in from can to can't, can't to can, uh, she, she makes it happen and she, and she does it with a smile. She doesn't ask for anything in return. Her only reward is she sees the smiles of her coworkers and the personality is just uh, is what we want everyone to be like. So thank you, Trina, for everything you do for us. <laughs> our next ambassador is Robin Smith. She is our operations specialist for the Oak Ridge Transportation Center. Robin is, again, one of those hard workers that does anything and everything that's needed. Uh, as an operations specialist, they're required to talk with parents that call, talk to drivers that come in, uh, handle routes on the fly if somebody doesn't show up to work, and just everything in between. In addition to that, Robin is also one of our field trip coordinators. Well, we run close to 7,000 trips in the district for the department, and she was over both centers at a time there whenever one of our specialists left. So 
South County is one of the places that has the majority of trips for our district, and, and she kept up with it. Uh, she didn't complain. I know you felt overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in addition to all that, she drove when was needed, whenever we had an open route or something. So, uh, Robin, thank you for everything you've done for the department and for being there for us. And last but not least is one of our Woodlands Transportation drivers, Lawana Ingalls. Oh. Lawana is a cool cat. She, uh, she knows how to handle an emergency situation. <laughs> we had one of our drivers, she was in the day room, and one of our drivers was eating lunch and uh, noticed that that driver started choking. Lawana didn't panic. She went over there. She actually correctly performed uh, the Heimlich, remover, uh, Heimlich maneuver and quite well saved that gentleman's life. She got the, the item dislodged. Uh, we still called paramedics to check him out. Thankfully, he was okay and he was able to go on his route that afternoon. So, <laughs> that was a lot of <laughs> Thank you for that, you know. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you staying calm and for doing, going above and beyond to save somebody's life like that. Thank you. Very quickly, let me just thank Sam for his leadership and thank each and every one of you for being the leaders that you are. And uh, much the same as a hungry child can't learn if they don't get to school. <laughs> well, well, leave it at that, okay? That's how important you are. Uh, I think Dr. Noel had to call a school day off the other day because some of you were flooded. And, and if y'all don't make it, we don't make it. <laughs> so if you don't think we don't think you're important, just don't try us, okay? <laughs> thank you. I was about to say, yeah. Mr. Davila was kind of showing his, so his age with that cool cat and <laughs> can the can't, you know, yeah. can the can't. <laughs> All right, um, before we go to uh, next item on the agenda, agenda, which is citizen participation, I'd like to um, take a brief moment to allow you guys to those who don't want to sit back and listen to this outstanding meeting, as always, get an opportunity to kind of part your way part ways and go home and put the kids to bed and get ready for the next day of school and all that other good stuff. Thank you for being You're welcome here. to stay. We appreciate it. If you'd like to leave, this opens the door for you here. So. <laughs> this is, this we just had somebody who could give us coffee. That's right. <laughs> This is your moment. You Don't look like I got many takers. <laughs> that's good. All right. Is there a principal or something being announced? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Um, item 2E, citizen participation. Ms. Goffer, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes, sir. All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted a complaint policies that are designated to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution to cons complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who, have a, those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. 
Delegations of more than five must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who signed up to address the board. Mr. Yalek. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Eric Yalek. May I proceed? Yes, yes sir. Okay. You, you were looking like you needed something to happen. I do, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, um, the Conroe ISD faces a severe crisis. Your spending on vendors is out of control, in particular, where you as a board of trustees have failed the citizens, is with respect particularly to the cost of capital projects. First, it's, you, it's clear as a board that you as a board do nothing to oversee capital projects. You don't examine the costs, you don't examine the methodology behind pricing, and you don't ever look to see whether there is better pricing available on capital projects. It's not a small problem. It's a problem that involves hundreds of millions of dollars just in the last few years. Your complete failure to manage or oversee these projects has led to a reliance on the services of PBK Architects. And where PBK Architects has failed the, the taxpayers is in several regards. But they've also failed the students and the teachers of Conroe ISD. Number one, according to employees within your own purchasing and maintenance departments, almost every single capital project fails to stay within its budget. Number two, according to employees within your purchasing, finance, and maintenance departments, your contracts with PBK actually reward PBK with higher compensation when cost overruns occur, so that PBK has every incentive to choose the highest costing contractors possible, to look the other way when cost overruns occur, and to encourage the highest expenditures possible. Number three, PBK has failed with respect to getting pricing on construction projects. Regardless of the market trends which Mr. Foster presented to you at your so-called workshop a couple, uh, last week, the reality is market trends don't explain the base prices that are so high above what they should be. The problem is, is that the bureaucracy of CISD is not tending to business, and quite frankly, that's your job as the Board of Trustees, to be managing and overseeing this district. Number four, you are not fooling anyone with the PBK cover-up. PBK provided political consulting to the CISD. They actually appeared at a board meeting of this board in February and provided electioneering advice. No one, doesn't, no one believes that PBK was not directly involved in that bond campaign, especially when PBK itself says that they were and lists CISD as a political consulting client. Now look, y'all are intelligent people. I've gotten to know several of the people on the board. I think you are fully capable of managing and overseeing this school district and particularly the capital projects. But I have a request. Number one, I think this board needs to defenestrate PBK from this school district. Number two, you need to go through your entire fiscal year 2020 budget process and see where you are in terms of your M&O budget before you make any decision about whether or not to present another bond referendum to the voters. And finally, Clearly, there needs to be a serious overhaul of the purchasing department, and that overhaul should not be delegated by this board to Dr. Null. That overhaul needs to come from the seven board members of the Board of Trustees of Conroe ISD. We as citizens and the students and teachers of this district depend on you to do that. Thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you. Ms. Goffin. John Wirtz. <clears throat> Go 
Good evening, President Williams, member of the board, and Dr. Noll. My name is John Wirtz. I'm the vetting committee chair of the Montgomery County Tea Party and treasurer of the Montgomery County Republican Party. Conroe Independent is an exceptional school district. It comes as a result of dedicated administrators and teachers, as well as highly motivated students and their parents. However, that's no license to ask for a blank check from hardworking taxpayers, many, many of whom are struggling to pay the lofty taxes handed down by the same ISD. <clears throat> when I first heard about the $807 million bond, I was shocked. How on the hills of $400 million plus dollar bond just four short years ago was something of this magnitude warranted considering CISD was already $1.3 billion in debt with school taxes that consisted of one half of all of our property taxes. As I started digging into this bond, red flags began popping up immediately. First was a traditionally low turnout May election day. We soon knew why. With a day off to boot, it was to maximize support staff and teacher turnout only. Looking at the early returns, objective achieved. And you now complain about low turnout? Whether you know it or not, and whether it was a heavily establishment weighted citizens committee, the $150 million remodeling of Conroe High School, same price as the newly built Grand Oaks High School, the two pairs of schools requiring the same exact amounts, the out of thin air replicating of numbers and so-called estimates of cost for new things in the bond across the district, as well as nearly a 40% cost increase of three elementary schools from 27 million two years ago to $37 million in the bond, this bond was doomed to fail. The unholy alliance and relationship between the district and PBK associates in this election has put a sour taste in everyone's mouth. It was discovered that this election, excuse me, this, it was discovered in the latter, an architectural firm specializing in constructing fancy buildings using taxpayer money actually had a political arm that strategizes with school districts on how to best help PBK make money at whatever cost to the taxpayer. I don't know if you're embarrassed by this fiasco or not, and especially you, Ray Sanders and Skeeter Hubert, since we supported you at Montgomery County Tea Party, which had no benefit to educational outcomes. If not, you should be. All of you should be. My suggestions, get more regular citizens involvement in evaluating the next proposal not your cronies. Give more realistic bids to what really needs to be done, not your 400% wish list. Pay for what's needed in part from the $150 million contingency fund and only go to a bond as a last resort. And finally, remove PBK from the equation. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, um, if it's all the same with the fellow board members here, we're going to move item eight up, human resources, naming of principals, Dr. No, Gentlemen, oh, you're you. okay with that? Yes, thank all you. All right. Sure. President Williams, I appreciate it. As we often talk about, the most important uh, part of my position here is to bring forth to you great recommendations for campus leadership. Um, the role of the principal is very important. Um, tonight, we, we start by naming the principal of Lamar Elementary. Uh, as you know, Lamar has such a proud tradition, and it's been led um, over its, its recent history by Mary Jane Kerbo, uh, and she has done a wonderful job, and she has um, made the decision to retire. And, and so moving forward, those are big shoes to fill. Um, but over the last few years, we've had an assistant principal there at Lamar that has um, proven herself to be a wonderful leader. Um, she fits into the culture and she uh, leads with a servant heart, um, always with a smile, but also um, is a strong leader. And so tonight, uh, it's my honor to recommend Ms. Kristen Belcher to be the next principal of Lamar Elementary. One, 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 one second. 
Yeah, one, one second. <laughs> All right. Mr. President, I make the motion. All right, gentlemen, we have a motion. We have a second. I second the motion. All right, gentlemen, we have a motion second. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor? All right, you got it. Thank you for entrusting me with the principalship of Lamar Elementary School. It is such an honor and I'm extremely blessed. I am fully committed to the students, staff, and community <clears throat> in which I serve. And I want to build upon and honor the foundation Ms. Mary Jane Curbo has built. She has made an impact on the community for many years and has left a lasting impression. I also want to continue to honor the traditions that are a huge part of Lamar Elementary. I find it true that every leader has an army of great leaders surrounding them. And I'm lucky to have many mentors who have helped shape me into the leader I am today. I would like to recognize a few of them this evening. Ms. JJ Dahl, principal of Wilkerson Intermediate, for investing in me when I was a teacher at Kaufman Elementary. She inspired me to be a lifelong learner and always prompted me to be a better instructional leader. To Ms. Angela Lozano, principal of Hauser Elementary, for always modeling professionalism, no matter what, and innovativeness. She is a true example of serving out of integrity. To Ms. Mary Jane Kerbo, for demonstrating what it means to persevere and to flourish amidst adversity. She is one of the strongest women cannot go without recognizing my sweet family. <laughs> my husband, Zach Belcher, who has supported me along this journey. He models daily how important building relationships truly are and has a direct impact on his own organization's success. To my daughter, Addison Belcher, who has taught me that hard work does not go unnoticed and to always let my light shine. All right. To my son, Chance Belcher, who reminds me daily to find the joy in every moment and to be present. And to my sweet angel, Parker Crew, for teaching me there's always a greater purpose in this life. Sometimes it's hard to find it, but it's there. Mm. And I would like to thank my parents who are here this evening. My mom, Cindy Abernathy, for always being my best friend and my biggest cheerleader. Her dedication to teaching children the past 30 years has shown me how impactful our work truly is to the students that we serve. And to my dad, Donald Abernathy, for modeling what it looks like to pour yourself into others and sacrifice. He has taught me that success is not measured by our achievements, but how we bless the lives of others. And my big brother, Clint Abernathy, who could not be here this <laughs> evening, but I cannot go without recognizing him. I've looked up to him as a little girl literally and figuratively <laughs> all my life. <laughs> when I think of a leader I want to be, I want to be like him. That's awesome. Can, can we have them stand? Yeah. The Abernathy. My brother has taught me that success a, my brother leads a life of compassion and service, and he's a true example of what, what it means to work hard and be kind. Exactly what our Lamar motto is. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank my countless friends and all of my colleagues. Each of them have impacted the person I am today, and my promise to each of you is to learn and grow from all the great people I'm surrounded by. Awesome. All right, thank you. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah. We're on a roll.
Dr. No. Item 8B, name principal, Oak Ridge High School, ninth grade campus, sir. Well, speaking of being on a roll, we've, we've been very successful at Oak Ridge High School, and, and the performance that they've shown over the last few years has been remarkable. And um, just last month, we elevated Dr. A.J. Lavecki to be the principal of Oak Ridge High School to continue that tradition. Um, and along those lines, now we have this position to fill at Oak Ridge Ninth. And uh, we went into this process looking for someone that could bring energy, that could bring uh, even more new ideas to the program, and we feel like we found the right person. Um, we've, we've gone a little south and, and gone to Klein ISD uh, and found a great leader in Klein ISD that comes very highly recommended. Um, and when you look at her resume, you see many great things that she's done, including leading community events, um, and being a, a leader of teachers and helping people that are aspiring to be leaders. Um, and beyond that, you see that she managed cheerleading and drill team, which tells you <laughs> you can do anything if you can manage <laughs> cheerleading and drill team um, as an administrator. But it is my honor um, to uh, tonight recommend Ms. Melanie Bujnok to be the principal of Oak Ridge ninth grade campus. Gentlemen, we have a recommendation. Do we have a motion? Mr. President, I move we approve as recommended. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Congratulations. Thank you, and thank you for your applause. Since I didn't come from Connor ISC, that was kind of like rough to follow. Um, <laughs> President Williams, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Knoll, what a privilege it is to be here with you this evening. Thank you for your trust in me to serve as the next principal of Oak Ridge High School's ninth grade campus. I'm truly grateful for this incredible, humbling honor. Um, I'm blessed to have this opportunity to work under Dr. Lebecki and carry on the tradition of excellence that he's established there at the school. I know that through his leadership and his mentorship, I'll be able to do great things not only on campus but also in Connor ISD. I also want to extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. Knoll, Dr. Hines, and Dr. Colshan, and Dr. Lebecki for their support and their confidence in me. I appreciate all the time they spent getting to know my strengths and my passions throughout the selection process, and I look forward to their continued mentorship in the years to come. The many opportunities, responsibilities, and challenges that I has, had as an administrator in Klein ISD have shaped the leader that I am today. I know that Conroe ISD will not only benefit from these experiences, but also push me further in my leadership capacity. Leadership has been described as a mountain with no top, and I like to believe that that's true of me and that the best is still yet to come. I, definitely want to thank the colleagues and educators, although they are not from Conroe ISD, that I've worked with over the years who've helped prepare me for this role. I've seen their relentless commitment to reaching every student, and they've inspired me more than they could ever know. I would not be the leader I am today without their influence, and I'm excited to work with the students and staff at the Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. I know that together we're going to accomplish great things. And finally, I want to thank my family and friends that are here today for their unending support and encouragement. Um, with me, I have my Mimi, <laughs> my mom, my sister, and two of my best friends. They help me see the best in myself and always show me what I'm capable of achieving. And for that, I'm forever grateful. I would definitely not be where I am today without them. And last but not least, my niece and nephew are reluctantly here missing um, karate and dance for this occasion. Um, they are both Conroe ISD students and they're here to celebrate with me tonight. And while all of our students are important, these two are particularly special to me. Um, and they definitely make me want to invest in the district and make it a better place for all kids to learn. Um, John Gordon says that if you don't love it, you'll never be great at it. And I cannot wait to show you the greatness that my love of our students and staff will bring to Connor ISD. It's a great day to become a War Eagle. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Oh,
All right, I'm going to extend that uh, offer once more for those of you who want to kind of break camp. <laughs> See if we can get more takers here. I'll go. It's time, yeah. to go it's time to go celebrate. All right. Uh, Congratulations to everyone, by the way. Well, that's exciting, right? Yeah. Right. Pretty awesome. <laughs> well, she taking credit for the recognition. She's teach Connor. Yeah, but did she take credit? I can play her room in a minute. sister probably. Yeah. I didn't know that. Be like a church. Everybody move up. There you go. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's keep it moving. Item three, consent agenda. Gentlemen, you've had the opportunity to take a look at the consent agenda. I had no request um, for anything to be removed. Mr. President, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. I we, second. Gentlemen, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you. Motion passes. All right. Item four, administration. Consider low attendance waiver for York Junior High. Dr. Noll. Yes, Mr. Colson. <laughs> President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, tonight we are asking for your approval of a low attendance waiver for York Junior High School. The Texas Education Agency allows school districts to apply for a waiver to excuse any instructional days from ADA funding calculations that have attendance at least 10 percentage points below the last school year's overall att average attendance for the campus due to inclement weather, health, or safety-related issues. The week after spring break, Social media contributed to rumors of threats at York, which led many parents to keep their students home from school on Friday, March 22, 2019. Only 58.8 percent of the students attended on March 22, compared to York's 96.7 percent average for the 2017-18 school year, thus qualifying for the waiver. The low attendance waiver was, has already been approved by the district level planning committee. We ask your approval. So moved. Second. Gentlemen, second. a motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? No questions. Any questions? Did you? I'm sorry? No, I thought Skeeter said something. Did you have no, I said Mr. no question. I was okay. going to say no question. Oh, sorry. So motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Thank you um, yeah. Mr. Cation. It's Caker, right? Great question. I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Nall, we're on item uh, 4B. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with Mr. Colson here. All right, Mr. Colson. <laughs> President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, tonight we would like to share with you information about selecting the mascot for Stockton Junior High School. Uh, over the past month, Mr. Hartwell Brown, the principal of Washington Junior High School and the future principal of Stockton Junior High School has implemented a mascot selection process. Because attendance zones have not been established as of yet, Mr. Brown solicited nominations from students and families at the three campuses that could potentially contribute students to Stockton. The campuses included were Bosman, Cryer, and Travis. Students submitted their ideas for the mascot. The submissions were compiled, and the top choices were then sent back to the students and their families to identify their favorite mascot. The finalists chosen were Stallions, Stingrays, and Spartans. Stallions was the favorite among voters by almost a two-to-one margin. It fits in nicely with the neighboring Bosman, Bosman Intermediate Bronco. The color schemes, as you've seen on the pictures, uh, incorporated in the building are maroon and gray. We will come back to you in June asking for your approval of the Stallions as the mascot and maroon and gray as the school colors for Stockton Junior High School. I know, I know. And it's Snyder, right? right. Snyder's better. They are, yes, as well. Yeah. All right, Jim. So the colors are official. What were the, what were the colors? Maroon and gray. Maroon and gray. Right. I used, you know. Mr. Husbands was a big fan. First this Florida thing, and now this Aggie thing. Uh, Looking for this burnt orange school. <laughs> it's in Austin. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have a motion, gentlemen? We don't. We don't. It's just not a vote tonight. It's information. Okay, it's just information. All right, cool. Receive information. Um, let read it a little bit better here. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Coach, and I appreciate that. Dr. Scott. Uh, that's with it. Item 4C, receive capital improvement, Dr. No. All right, Mr. Foster. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Noll. It's my pleasure to bring you an update on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district, starting with Suchma Elementary. Suchma Elementary is scheduled to open in August uh, of 2019, so it's for this coming school year. 
And the, the guys out on the field have been working diligently to overcome yeah. rain. We've encountered a significant amount of rain, uh, higher than average during a, a project like this, but they're making good ground, making up everything they're supposed to. So I'm happy to report we, we will open this school on time for school for uh, students when they come in August. Was this picture taken before or after all the rain? Uh, this picture is actually on the 15th, so just after some. Just after. So the good news is, is uh, the roof, uh, the exterior walls, things of that nature are in good shape. So that you can see the work is focusing on the front door currently. So we can bring the life to that building, the personality. So the metal roof is going in, the stone work is going on, the brickwork that makes that entry uh, a grand entrance for our students when they approach school. The real fun happens on the inside. So the good news of we are talking about the milestone of reaching that dry point. We've, we're at the point or have been at that point. So we've been working earnestly on the inside of that building. So you can see windows are looking uh, through the entry to the library and the commons, uh, ceiling grid, light fixtures, things of that nature, uh, casework, all the other stuff that make that school a school have been delivered and be ready to install. This past week, we started up the air conditioning system. So those systems will be coming online over the next couple of weeks to 100% capacity of that system. And then we'll be able to finish that job uh, in plenty of time for school to start. At Austin Elementary, we're doing a building addition uh, that allows us to take some of the oldest portions of that building out of service. So you can see the nice bright white roof, that's the new section of that building, is uh, the, uh, just like Suchma, the milestone was to get that building dry. So the roof work on Austin is essentially complete, thus the white finish layer that's on it. On the inside of Austin, we've got a uh, finished product going in place. You can see light fixtures, seam grid, ceramic tile, things of that nature. Uh, and again, just like such a focus of the work at the front door so people can see the personnel of that building as they approach. The real work for Austin happens this summer. So the work for the building is pro progressing just as we had hoped it would. The real critical path is getting the old original buildings demolished so that we can get the new parking, new entryway to that front door built over the course of summer just as we had planned. We'll have that building ready for school when it starts in August, just like we do for such a At Stockton Junior High School, that building is scheduled to open in August of 2020, and it is proceeding just as we had hoped. So it is on schedule. Uh, you can see here the building structure, building roofing, things of that nature, and the building skin. So we're marching towards that milestone of open, uh, drying in that building. So we're still a long ways away from drying in that building, but we're right where we want to be in that schedule. It's supposed to open in August of 2020. Inside that building, there's stuff going on too. So building systems, plumbing, air conditioning, all the things that make the building tick uh, are being installed just as we had hoped. Now at Connor High School, we've got a building addition which opened at the uh, winter break uh, to facilitate the renovation where we're working on right now in the main campus. So over the last couple months, we've showed you the cleared out second floor of the main building. This is the new layout of the classrooms and corridors for that work. And the inside of that work is focusing on the classrooms this summer. The second floor is scheduled to open when students return in August. When we break for the summer break uh, in, on June 3rd, we start in earnest working on the first floor, doing the same renovation to the first floor, and we'll be on that campus through December of 2019. Our life cycle project, which is where we replace whole building systems that have reached the end of their useful life. Uh, we've been working at Giesinger, so the metal roof at Giesinger is, is progressing now. We've also been working at Rice, where the, the new roof installation at Rice is about 90% complete, so it's, it's right on schedule where we hoped it would be. And our work now focuses on what we need to do during the summer. So we're gonna be focusing on our high school entries uh, this summer, uh, bringing some secure, the security uh, enhancements to those entries waged our uh, senior campuses that we have been reading, meaning to get to as part of this bond election. So that time has arrived, and we're gonna work on that stuff this summer and get as much as we can ready for school. And that's our update. Outstanding. All right. Thank you, Mr. Foster. All right, item five, business and finance. Dr. No. All right, Mr. Darren Rice. Mr. President, I just want to make it known on item 5A that I will be abstaining from any of the discussion or the vote due to a conflict of interest that I have. Absolutely. Noted. All right. Mr. Rice. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. Tonight, we're recommending the board extend the existing bank depository contract with Wood Forest National Bank for a two-year period commencing September 1, 2019 and ending August 31, 2021. As required by the Texas Education Code, the depository contract must be renewed every two years. The current contract extension will expire August 31, 2019. The district is allowed to extend the contract for one additional two-year term that will expire August 31, 2021. 
Um, as you all know, Wood Forest has been a great partner, and we really appreciate the relationship that, that we have with Wood Forest. And they have provided us a great service, and over the years we have paid no cost to the bank. They have given us banking services basically for free. So we really appreciate that service. And at this time, I recommend their approval. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. you heard the uh, recommendation. Move approval is presented. Second. I have a motion, I have a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you, Mr. Rice. Motion passes. You want to do extensions? Yeah. Oh, we have motion on the extensions as well? No, he can. No, do just you want to ask if there are any abstentions. Yeah, he's nays and abstentions. Okay. Uh, all in favor again? Okay, all opposed? Abstentions? Two abstentions. All right. Four pass. Pass. Thank you. I forgot about it. Thank you. Um, all right. Consider award RFP 181001 office supplies. Mr. Rice? Yes, we're recommending the board award RFP 181001 office supplies to Daniel Office Products for an estimated annual expenditure of approximately $880,000. Requests for proposals pertaining to the purchase of office supplies for the district were emailed to 120 vendors through the electronic e-bidding system. The proposal was advertised two times in the courier. Line item prices will be effective for one year from the time of award, automatically renewing annually for two additional one-year terms through May 31st of 2022. Proposals were evaluated by the purchasing department and funds for the purchase of office supplies are provided in the general fund. Best offer values are recommended for board award. At this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. Motion second. All, um, any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Motion passes. Item uh, 5C. Dr. No. Mr. Rice. Yes, we're recommending that the board award RFQ 19-02-06 language art supplies for an estimated expenditure of $225,000 to the 10 vendors listed below. And this is language arts for Suchma. Mm -hmm. um, requests for quotes pertaining to language art supplies for Suchma Elementary were emailed to 394 right. vendors through the electronic e-bidding system. 10 vendors submitted a response. Prices are to be effective through June 30th of 2019. Quotes were evaluated by the CISD curriculum and special education departments, then reviewed by the person de purchasing department. Funds are provided in the capital projects fund. At this time, I recommend your approval. Uh, gentlemen, a recommendation. We have a motion, Mr. Emma. Second. I have a second, Mr. Moore. All of, uh, discussion. I do have one question, just for ahead, Mr. Moore. This is for a one-time purchase to open the school. This is not a recurring yearly. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah, it's only good through the end of June. Fun. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice, uh, Dr. Nall, uh, receive financial reports. Right. Item 5D. Mr. Rice. All right, it is my pleasure to present the financial statements for the district for the month of April. As always, these statements will include the general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet of the district includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. And each month, we like to keep an eye on our cash and investments. And once again, we'll concentrate on our general fund. Within the general fund, we have cash on hand of $500, bank deposits of $277,000. We have investments in the state pools of $134 million. We have investments with Wood Forest National Bank of $121.4 million. And our longer-term investments uh, with TCG Investment Advisors of $51.2 million, leaving us with total cash and investments of $307 million in the general fund. We always like to keep our eye on property tax collections also. And as you can see this year, we're right in line with where we've been in the past. The next statement we'll look at this evening is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balances. Revenues are broken down into three categories that include local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. So looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, and looking at the general fund, I would just like to draw your attention to the investment income line. Uh, the, the line of about $4.4 million this year, I'm bringing that up because that's, that's twice over what we earned last year, and so I'm really uh, proud of those, those earnings that we've got on our investments. Uh, now we're looking at our self-funded insurance progress. Uh, once again, April was a, was a good month. The plan is performing very well. Uh, for the year, we've had total revenues of $33.2 million, total expenses of $31.3 million, leaving us with revenues over expenses of about $1.9 million. Uh, 
our employees are still trusting our wellness centers for their health care needs. Um, we had 532 visits in the month of April for the year 4,426. 4, I do caution you, as you all are aware, the summer months are high, high utilization, so we're keeping our fingers crossed that, that we have no high claims or overutilization of the plan during the summer. Our investments for the month, our total par, par value of our portfolio is $466.7 million. Um, our pools are yielding 2.59%. Uh, Wood Forest National Bank is currently paying 2.68%. Right now, the agreement with Wood Forest National Bank is 25 basis points above the 90-day T-bill. However, we're renegotiating that, and that will come back down to about 20 basis points since the rates have, have leveled off lately. Huh? <laughs> it was either that or they couldn't provide the service to us. But 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 even 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 with even with that decrease of five basis points, they will outperform the pools as they are. Our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors is up to 2.05%, leaving us with a combined portfolio that has a WAM of 35 days, yielding 2.56%. And as you can see, our benchmark, which is the 90-day T bill, is currently at 2.37%. There we go. That was all. Sure. President Williams, if I may just offer that um, if we could take about a five minute recess as we prepare for our level three hearings and allow the, the room to clear out, if that would be acceptable. Yes. Sounds like a plan. Gentlemen, no objection? Sir. All right, gentlemen, if we can reconvene at this time. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on May 21st, 2019. The quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, Mr. Sanders, and Mr. Inman. The board will hear the complaint appeal of parent Patrice Ward in accordance to local board policy FNG. This hearing is being recorded. Mrs. Ward's complaint is against various staff members at McCullough Junior High School because Mrs. Ward's complaint is against district employees and because personally identifiable information about a public school student could be revealed, the hearing will be held in closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code sections 551.074 and 551.0821. The board will also go into executive session under Texas Government Code section 551.071 for consultation with the board's attorney. The meeting is now adjourned to executive session under Texas Government Code Section 551.071, 551.074, and 551.0821. Everyone not associated with this hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 739. The board has reconvened now in open session. The time is now 805. The board will now make its decision. The board can uphold the decision of the level one and level two hearing officers. The board can overturn the hearing officers decisions or the board can grant any relief they feel is appropriate. Is there a motion at this time? I move that the board uphold the decisions of the hearing officers and deny all relief that has not previously been granted. Second. Yeah, we have a motion, motion and a second. Okay. All those in favor? The motion passes unanimously. All right. Mrs. W the board will make a written notice to Mrs. Ward confirming the action taken by the board. This concludes the hearing. This meeting of the Connor ISD Board of Trustees is convened on May 21st, 2019. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, Mr. Sanders, and Mr. Inman. The board will hear the complaint appeal of parent Mr. B.M. in accordance with local board policy FNG. Mr. B.M. requested that his name not be used in open session. This hearing is being recorded. Mr. B.M. filed complaints on February 2nd, February 13th, and February 15th against various staff members at Bush Elementary School, as well as the district level staff. Because Mr. B.M.'s complaints arise out of a series of related events, his complaints were consolidated in accordance with policy F and G. The hearing will be held in closed session pursuant to Texas Government Codes 551.074 and 551.0821 because Mr. B.M.'s complaints are against district employees and because personally identifiable information about a public school student could be revealed. The meeting is now adjourned to executive session under Texas Government Codes Section 551.074 and 551.0821. Everyone not associated with this hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 8.09. All right. The board has now reconvened in open session. It is 9.03.
The board will now make its decision. The board can uphold the decisions of the level one hearing officer. The board can overturn the hearing officer's decision or the board can grant any relief that they feel is appropriate. Is there a motion at this time? Mr. President, I move the board uphold the decision of the hearing officers and deny all relief that has not previously been granted. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? The unanimous decision. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Maddox, the district will send you a written notice confirming the action taken by the board. Okay? And this concludes the hearing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And now your executive session. All right. A closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting authorized by Section 551. That's 071 551 and 551 of Texas Open Meetings Act, of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final decision, final, final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regards to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be, um, shall be at either A, the public meeting upon reconvening of the public meeting, or B, a subsequent meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. It is 9.05 p.m. Thank you. All right, uh, the board is now in open session. The time is 10.03 p.m. The next agenda item is item 9C, proposed termination for good cause and authorization for uh, proposed and termination of term employment agreement contract of Kenneth Allsmith. President Williams, I would like to withdraw this item tonight uh, from consideration, if that's okay with you. Agreed. Understood. All right, gentlemen, that concludes our business today. We're going to entertain a motion. To we don't have to have a motion for that, right? That's no. Uh, no. Just just make a motion right. to adjourn. Fair enough. We have a motion. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you, everybody.